Hello students, continuing with our topic on economic reforms, let us come to the part 2 of it. In the earlier topic, we covered liberalization. Now, we are going to cover the following points of the economic reforms since 1991. Number 1, privatization, the arguments in favor and against of privatization. Number 3, globalization. Under this, we will also discuss positive and negative aspects of globalization. Then outsourcing, then WTO that is the World Trade Organization. We will also give an appraisal of the LPG policy. L stands for liberalization, P for privatization and G for globalization. We will also give arguments in favor of the economic reform policies and finally, we will give a criticism of the economic reforms in India. Let us come to privatization. Under this policy, private sector has been allowed to play a major role in different types of economic activities. In other words, we can say that privatization is a process that reduces the participation of the state and public sector in the economy. Then what do you mean by privatization? Privatization means transfer of ownership, management and control of public sector enterprises to the entrepreneurs in the private sector. Privatization implies greater role of the private sector in the economic activities of the country. Over the years, Indian government has diluted its stake in several public sector enterprises, including IPCL, IBP, Maruti Udyog, etc. Privatization can be done in the following ways. Number one, transfer of ownership and management of public sector companies from the government to the private sector. Number two, privatization of the public sector itself by selling off part of the equity of PSUs, that is public sector units, to the public. This process is known as disinvestment. And number three, entry of private sector industries into the exclusively reserved industries for the public sector. Finally, limiting the scope of public sector and no further expansion of the existing public sector. The purpose of privatization was to improve financial discipline and facilitate modernization. It was also believed that private capital and managerial capabilities will help in improving performance of the public sector units. Let us give the arguments in favor of privatization. In view of the poor performance of the public sector enterprises, they were placing a large burden on the economy due to huge losses and growing subsidy payments. Privatization reduces the financial burden of the government. Privatization abolishes the monopoly position of the public sector enterprises and helps in improving the competitive strength and efficiency of these enterprises. It helps in improving managerial efficiency as the management is not subjected to unwanted political influence, pressure and interference. There is no political pressure due to recruit unwanted staff which leads to improved efficiency of the organization. Quick and timely decisions are keys to get success in this competitive world. The policy of privatization will be helpful in imparting greater flexibility in the decision making process as management would be free from any government intervention. Consumer is supreme under privatization. The survival of private enterprises depends on satisfaction of the consumers. Privatization will lead to caring of the consumers because of the need for creating and sustaining market. Hence, the quality of service will improve. Besides, privatization opens up areas 
which were earlier reserved for the public sector. For example, the insurance sector. It increases the investment by the private sector, which leads to creation of greater employment and income earning opportunities in the economy. Now come to the arguments against privatization. It is argued that the social welfare is neglected in the process of privatization. The private sector enterprises operate mainly with the objective of profit maximization and this system does not guarantee social welfare of the poor people. The private sector does not take interest in projects which are risky and have long gestation period with lower profitability. This may adversely affect the growth of basic and heavy industries and infrastructure in the country. A World Bank study estimates that investment in infrastructure in India actually declined from 5.4 percent of GDP in 1991-92 to 4.6 percent in 1997-98. Reduction in involvement of the government could result in the substitution of a public monopoly to a private monopoly, which may further lead to monopolistic exploitation by efficient private owners. State monopoly is definitely preferred to private monopoly. Under privatization, there is always fear of retrenchment and consequent unemployment. Privatization in many public sector enterprises has led to voluntary retirement of many workers. In this way, this policy may lead to greater incidence of unemployment and poverty in the country. Let us talk about the Navaratnas and Mini Ratnas. In the context of PSUs, that is public sector units in India, Navaratnas refer to nine such profit making companies which are compared with nine individuals in the court of King Vikramaditya who were men of eminence and rare wisdom. The objectives of giving titles was to improve the efficiency of public sector undertakings by giving them autonomy in taking managerial decisions. For instance, some PSUs have been granted special status as Navaratnas and Mini Ratnas. For example, BHEL that is Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, BPCL, SAIL, etc. They were given managerial and operational autonomy in taking various decisions to run the company efficiently and to increase their profits. The granting of Navaratna status resulted in better performance of these companies. Apart from this, 97 other profit making enterprises were granted greater operational, financial and managerial autonomy and they were referred to as mini Ratnas. In June 2016, there were 17 Navaratnas which are listed. Now come to the topic on globalization. The term globalization indicates the opening up of the economy for the world. It implies interaction of the economy relating to production, trading and financial transactions with other countries of the world. The policy of globalization encourages both foreign trade and foreign investment. Let us now define the term globalization. Globalization means integrating the national economy with the world economy through removal of barriers on international trade and capital movements. Globalization is the outcome of the policies of liberalization and privatization. It is the integration of the economy of the country with the world economy and it is an outcome of the set of various policies that aim to transform the world towards greater independence and integration. This involves creation of networks and activities transcending economic, social and geographical boundaries. In short, globalization aims to create a borderless world. Changes made by the globalization of the Indian economy. 
Let us look at the changes. The new economic policy prepared a specified list of high technology and high investment priority industries in which automatic permission will be available for foreign direct investment up to 51 percent of foreign equity. In respect of foreign technology agreements, automatic permission is provided in high priority industry up to a sum of rupees 1 crore. No permission is now required for hiring foreign technicians or for testing indigenously developed technology abroad. In order to make international adjustment of Indian currency, rupee was devalued in July 1991 by nearly 20 percent. It stimulated exports, discouraged imports and raised the influx of foreign capital. To integrate economy with the world, the union budget 1992-93 made Indian rupee partially convertible and then the rupee was made fully convertible in only current account transactions in 1993 and 94 budget. Five year export import policy covering 1992 to 1907 was announced by the government to establish the framework of globalization of India's foreign trade. This policy removed all restrictions and controls on the external trade and allowed market forces to play a greater role in respect of exports and imports. In order to bring the Indian economy within the ambit of global competition, the government has modified the customs duty to a considerable extent. Accordingly, the peak rate of customs duty has been reduced from 250 percent to 10 percent on certain goods in the year 2007-8 budget. Let us look at the positive and negative traits of globalization. The process of globalization through liberalization and privatization policies has produced positive as well as negative results both for India and other countries. Let us see the arguments which favor globalization. Number one, globalization led to improved allocative efficiency of resources, reduced the capital output ratio and increased the inflow of foreign capital. It also updated technology into the economy and increased the average growth rate of the economy. It led to an increase in the flow of goods and services among countries. As a result, world trade has flourished. This in fact helped in redistribution of production and trade pattern in a capital scarce, labor abundant economies such as India. It has increased economic prosperity and opportunity in the developing world. Cheaper and high quality consumer goods would be manufactured in the country with imported technology. There is an improvement in the banking and financial sector with competition from foreign capital and foreign banks. Let us look at the arguments against globalization. Globalization has been criticized by some scholars because the benefits of globalization accrued more to developed countries as they were able to expand their markets in other countries. Globalization in fact compromises the welfare and identity of people belonging to poor countries. Market driven globalization increases the economic disparities among nations and people. All countries have become vulnerable to the development outside their own territories. For example, US subprime crisis, Euro crisis to cite. Let us look at the point outsourcing. This is an important outcome of the process of globalization. It refers to a system of hiring business services from the outside world. These services include call centers, transcription, clinical advice, teaching, coaching, 
etc you know india is emerging as an important destination of outsourcing particularly business process outsourcing also called call centers this is because of certain reasons for example availability of cheap labor in india or relatively low wage rate for the skilled workers or revolutionary growth of it industry in india some of the services are being outsourced by companies from india which include voice based business processes known as bpo or call centers record keeping accountancy banking services music recording film editing book transcription clinical advice etc etc now come to the point on world trade organization particularly known as wto you know the general agreement on trade and tariff that is gat was established as global trade organization in 1948 with 23 countries gat was set up to administer all multilateral trade agreements by providing equal opportunities to all countries in the international market WTO was founded in 1995 as the successor organization to the GATT. The WTO agreements cover trade in goods as well as services to facilitate international trade. At present, there are 164 member countries of the WTO and all the members are required to abide by laws and policies framed under WTO rules. as an important member of wto india has been in the forefront of framing fair global rules regulations and advocating the interests of the developing world india has kept its commitments made to the wto india has taken reasonable steps to liberalize trade by removing quantitative restrictions on imports and reducing tariff rates let us look at the functions of wto number 1 to facilitate international trade both bilateral and multilateral trade through removal of tariffs as well as non tariff barriers number 2 to establish a rule based trading regime in which nations cannot place arbitrary restrictions on trade number 3 to enlarge production and trade of services number 4 to ensure optimum utilization of world resources number 5 to protect the environment number 6 to provide a platform to member countries to decide future strategies related to trade and tariff these are the functions of wto let us come to the point of appraising liberalization privatization and the globalization policies commonly known as lpg economic reforms created mixed reactions at different levels let us discuss some of the positive and negative aspects of economic reforms first the arguments in favor of economic reforms the following are some of the important arguments advanced in favor of the economic reforms number 1 higher growth rate the average growth rate gdp increased from 5.6% during 1980-91 to 6.1% during 1992-2001 and 8.2% in 2007 to 2012 period this shows that there has been an increase in the overall gdp growth in the reform period during this period the growth of agriculture and industrial sectors has declined whereas the growth of service sector has gone up this indicates that the growth is mainly driven by the growth in the service sector currently the growth rate of gdp is estimated to be more than 8% number 2 rapid increase in the foreign direct investment the new economic policy has led 
to the rapid increase in the forex direct investment that is FDI and foreign exchange reserves. There has been an increase in the foreign exchange reserves from about 100 million US dollar in 1991 to US dollar 350 billion in 2015-16. Number 3, rise in exports. The value of India's exports and imports has increased considerably since 1990-91. India has experienced considerable increase in exports of auto parts, engineering goods, IT software and textiles, etc. Number 4, check on inflation. Increase in production, tax reforms and other reforms helped in controlling the inflation. The annual rate of inflation reduced from the peak level of 17% in 91 to around 7.6% in 2012-13. Number 5, increase in the role of private sector. Since 1991, the private sector is playing a dominant role. Abolition of licensing system and removal of restrictions on entry of the private sector in areas earlier reserved for the public sector have enlarged the area of operation of the private sector. Let us come to performance of the industrial sector. The industrial sector has been experiencing a very high growth rate of over 8 percent since 2003-2004. It experienced a growth of 7.4 percent during the 12th plan period. Let us analyze the economic reforms critically. Critics have raised certain arguments against the new economic reforms, especially in the areas of employment, agriculture, industry, infrastructure development and fiscal management. Though the GDP growth rate has increased in the reform period, but such growth failed to generate sufficient employment opportunities in the country. We can say it leads to jobless growth. The new economic policy has neglected the agricultural sector as compared to industry, trade and service sector. Public investment in agriculture sector, especially in infrastructure, which includes irrigation, power, roads, market linkages and research and extension has been reduced in the reform period. The removal of fertilizer subsidy increased the cost of production which adversely affected the small and marginal farmers. The policies of reduction in import duties on agricultural products, removal of minimum support price, lifting of quantitative restrictions on agricultural products have adversely affected the Indian farmers as they had to face increased international competition. Due to export oriented policy strategies in agriculture, the production shifted from food grains to cash crops for the export market. It led to rise in the prices of food grains. Due to globalization, there was a greater flow of goods and capital from developed countries and as a result domestic industries were exposed to imported goods. Cheaper imports replaced the demand for domestic goods and domestic manufacturers started facing competition from imports. This led to the slowing down of the industrial sector. Besides this infrastructure facilities including power supply have remained inadequate due to lack of investment. All quota restrictions on exports of textiles and clothing have been removed from India. But some developed countries like the United States of America has not removed their quota restrictions on import of textiles from India. The disinvestment policy of government was not successful because the assets of the public sector undertakings were undervalued and sold at cheaper rates to the private sector. Moreover, such proceeds from disinvestments were used to compensate 
shortage of government revenues rather than using it for the development of the public sector units and building social infrastructure in the country. Now multinational corporations are a dominating role in the Indian economy. They are exploiting Indian markets and are selling their products. They are thus making huge profits. Indians sometimes wastefully spend their money on a variety of global brands in the market. The new policy has been encouraging a dangerous trend of consumerism by encouraging the production of luxuries and items of superior consumption. Growth has been concentrated only in some select areas in the service sector such as telecommunication, information technology, finance, entertainment, travel and hospitality, real estate, trade rather than vital sectors such as agriculture and industry which provide livelihood to millions of people in the country. In the end, let us summarize whatever we have said about economic reforms. The new economic policy 1991 is sometimes called the LPG policy where L stands for liberalization, P for privatization and G for globalization. The combination of all these policies has produced some positive as well as negative results in the economy. It should be noted that it is not a master key to open all locks. It has not been able to solve the problems like poverty, inequality of income, regional imbalances and unemployment. Since the new economic policy 1991, the trend in India's balance of trade including export and import and foreign direct investment shows a considerable change. India is improving its position in the world trade. In the recent past, due to access to global markets, high technology and growth and development in service sector, India has become a key player in the international arena. Thank you.